what is the best treatment for those hot flushes? The best treatment known to in all studies, to all doctors, to all naturopaths, to all everybody else, is hormone therapy. It is the single best treatment for hot flushes. There is no proven head-to-head -head better treatment. We're not talking about safety, we're not talking about other risks, we're talking about the most effective. Right, so why then is there a whole storm in a teacup about hormone therapy? Well, this is why you have trouble. And why don't you get a straight answer? If you go to your doctor, they say, you say, what's your problem? I've got hot flashes. What do you need? Hormone therapy. Can I have the hormone therapy? No. Simple. That's the equation. Three minutes have gone by. It's the end of consultation. Ching, ching, and we're off. That's MSP. That's what you're allowed to ask. That's about all you get. Or it goes like this. What's your problem? I've got hot flashes. What's the treatment? Hormone therapy. Can you have it? Yes. He has a prescription. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's the consultation. You go to a gynecologist, it might get extended to 27 minutes instead of 8 minutes, but it's the same thing. What's your problem? Here it is. Are you safe? Are you not? Here's your prescription. Standardized. So, that was what was done before 2002. And women were singing along just fine, sort of, doing okay, on Premarin and Provera. Pregnant mares urine, pregnant, that's horse pee, estrogen and Provera, which is synthetic progestin, not progesterone. They thought they were doing well. Then along they said, let's try and the company that makes Provera and Premarin, or Premarin and, the, and the, the American researchers thought, let's go for the big one. Let's see if we can prove that Premarin and Provera not only kill hot flushes, but prevent heart disease and death. Preventative treatment for hormones. They thought, let's do it. A 10-year study. What happened? In 2002, they realized there was an increased risk of breast cancer, heart disease, and clotting. Shocked the world of medicine. Shocked everybody. Doctors gave up on hormones. Women gave up on hormones. Millions tossed out their hormones. And the hot flushes came on. So we've had 10 years of incredible hot flushes. Untreated, unresolved, with women who cannot get help. Supposedly. So what was the response to that? Of course, if the medical industry and the doctors essentially fail the needs of their patients, something else will step up to take its place. Here we have Suzanne Summers. She was the messiah, the hormone messiah that stepped up to take the place of medical doctors. And kudos to her, she brought back the conversation onto safe, hopefully, and effective use of hormone therapy. Away from the horse pea femoral to identical, bio-identical hormones. Real estrogen that your body makes on its own, used to make, and now we can provide. Not the pro progestin, the synthetic, but the real true root progesterone that your body is used to, and the testosterone, all three. And that is called bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Okay? So that is the term that came up. So now, why is there a problem? We have Suzanne Summers' books, we have the answer. What is the problem? The synthetic hormones, which were shown to be unsafe, we thought. We have the bioidentical, which claimed to be super safe and make you live well, and as she said, not itchy, not bitchy, good sex drive, thin, etc., etc. That's possibly true. But what about the risks? Are they any safer is the question. We don't know that yet. So this is where we have been in the last 10 years. Now, is she a hormone expert? Well, she's not a doctor, but she's studied widely and she's tapped on it and she's rich enough and, and uh, passionate enough to actually do the research and find out for herself which is good, but she essentially promotes compounded bioidentical hormones for all women for as long as they need, in fact, until they die. They should take it not just from menopause, but right through to the end, and claims that that's going to be safe and effective. That we haven't actually proven or seen. So there's the gray zone. So now we go, it gets clouded a bit more. There was an article called The Hormone Hoax, in More magazine this year. They did their own study. 
They went to 12 compounding pharmacies and asked them to produce a particular extract of hormones, a standard concoction of bioidentical hormones. They evaluated those hormones and found that the range of concentrations in those compounded creams, very, sorry, pills, compounded pills, vary widely. Some had almost none, some had double the amount that they were supposed to have. So there's a little bit of a problem raised with some compounding pharmacies. In the States, there's been some deaths from compounded intravenous treatments and uh, brain treatments that some pharmacies produce for hospitals that were done in an unsterile way. So we've got a little bit of a problem and a questioning of the compounding uh, mantra. I use compounding pharmacies often, but there is a question. So now we're confused. We've got all of these, what do we do? By identical synthetic, estrogen, progesterone, bremen, you know, it, it, it's a totally confusing situation. So, I've, I've, you know, I'm not the world expert on hormones, but I have experience 20 years in prescribing hormones for women and the last 12 years in researching and training in by identical hormone replacement therapy and menopause management. The last conference, North American Menopause Society, that represents endocrinologists, gynecologists, family doctors, and nurse practitioners who work in the menopause field. So 900 or so of them of us came together in Dallas, and there at that meeting they presented the latest research. Now this is the medical side. They laughed at Suzanne Summers. They mocked her. They even showed, tried to show a video and they had somebody try and try to defend her. But, very important lessons from that conference, and that's why we're here. There is a safe way to do hormone replacement therapy. The researchers very cleverly reanalyzed and looked at the data from the 2002 Women's Health Initiative, and they divided it up by age, instead of the whole thing, and they said that between um, 50 and 59, because the woman in the Women's Health Initiative ranged from 50 to 80. The average age was over 60. Most of the women in the Women's Health Initiative were older, more overweight, a lot of smokers, a lot of high blood pressure, high risk to start. Put them on estrogen and progesterone, progestin, high rate of clot, heart attack, stroke, and cancer. Reanalyze the data. The women that were between 50 and 59, no such bad effects. No such increase in heart disease. In fact, not even an increase in breast cancer. So for sure, between 50 and 59, or 40 and 60, essentially, in your perimenopausal and early menopausal years, no concerns. Even if you want to do synthetic, Prevera and Provera. Of course, I don't advise. I would rather use human identical or bioidentical is what it's called now. Lower doses could be needed. There's a dosage issue. And the type of hormone therapy now matters. And there were many papers at the NAMS, at the North American Menopause Society meeting, which looked at the KEEP study from Scandinavia and the whole PEPI studies at different types of progesterone and compared real progesterone natural, this is the molecule that your body makes in the second half of every cycle, menstrual cycle, and thereafter. And this is the progestin, Provera, with a couple of synthetic bonds stuck on. That's a synthetic. Comparing them head to head, better outcomes and better heart attack risk on natural progesterone. And we know that using natural progesterone makes you feel better. So not only is your heart better protected, but you feel less anxious and you sleep better. But here's the rub. Does the natural progesterone, if you rub it on your skin, go through into your body enough to protect your uterus from the estrogen causing cancer in the uterus? No evidence of it. So unfortunately, you have to take it orally if you have a uterus. Be careful on which type of bioidentical, even bioidentical, which way you do it. So we rather use the word, because bioidentical now has been associated with compounding pharmacies and other strange things. So those of us in the medical world who are trying to do a more rational and logical way of approaching hormones, 
tend to use the word human identical, because it's identical to what you have in your 